One of the most ancient treatments for infections, especially on the skin, which is where a lot of our microbiome lives, is honey. And research is showing that this isn't a myth. Honey really does have remarkable properties. Tonic's Casey Barros investigates. I think honey is amazing because it has such potent antimicrobial activity in it. It'll kill these bugs sort of dead on the head, but it's absolutely non-toxic to us. It actually attacks the bugs from a number of different angles at the same time, which is probably why it's so effective. So the high sugar content in honey will actually have an impact. Basically draw the water, draw the moisture out of the cells of the microorganisms. It's also quite acidic and again things that cause infections don't tend to like acidic environments. The main risk with honey is allergy, but that's rare. The amazing thing about these therapeutic effects is that they're given to us by the bee itself. In the process of making honey, the bee adds an enzyme which causes a chemical reaction that makes hydrogen peroxide, a bleach, which kills bugs. And this all goes on between the flower and the hive. When honey is gathered by the bees, it's basically nectar at that stage and it's called sucrose. Now, when the bee carries it back to the hive in its stomach, it adds an enzyme called invitase, which deposits it in a cell in the comb of the, of the actual hive. The bees make that cell themselves from wax. What happens then is that the house bees will fan air over that nectar, evaporating moisture. Now, they usually get it down to about 17% water by volume, so it becomes quite sticky. They fill the cell up and then when it's full, they'll actually put a wax cap on the top. Now that is what you call ripe honey. The hydrogen peroxide that's produced in the honey, because it's enzymically produced, it's slowly produced and slowly released at a high enough level to kill the bugs, but not high enough to damage your tissue. Honey is already being used to treat people with burns and wounds where infection may be a problem. And researchers are investigating the use of honey in lots of other situations like fluid replacement after gastro, upper respiratory tract infections, and even helping to get rid of the ulcer germ, Helicobacter pylori. Although the best evidence is for topical use, that's applying it to the skin. So we've also done some work looking at multi-resistant bugs. So these are these organisms that are resistant to almost all the antibiotics that we have left. So if you're in a patient in a hospital who's usually already very sick anyway, acquires an infection from one of these bugs, we've almost going back to the old days before we invented antibiotics and we've got nothing to treat them with. The amazing thing about certain types of honey is that that is incredibly powerful against these bugs without being a nasty and toxic drug. Fungal cells also cause infections. Tinea is a classic example of that, or candida or thrush. And again, we've done some work and we found that certain types of honeys are very effective against these types of organisms as well. There are some honeys which are much more active and much better than others, as a, particularly as a topical wound treatment. For example, the manuka honey or the jelly bush from here. Uh, there's another honey from Western Australia called Jarrah honey, which has very high levels of antimicrobial activity due to very high levels of hydrogen peroxide production from the enzyme that the bees add. There are actually honeys now that are sold in Australia as medical wound dressings, not as something to eat. And they're the types of honey that should be used on any serious wound because they've been treated like a medicine. They've been sterilised and appropriately handled and made in the right type of factories in the right environment and appropriately tested.